Consistently strong pitching performances like this one were being turned in almost daily by Cardinal starters. Without them, the Cardinals certainly would not have been on top. The Cardinals played some whitey ball in Montreal on June 8th, using the hit and run, stretching singles into doubles, and stealing bases as they had all season, the team attempted to break a 3-3 deadlock in the 12th inning. It was time to entertain the Canadian fans. Ozzie Smith led off with a walk and took second on a sacrifice. With one out. Two and two to Willie McGee. Ozzie Smith walked. He's been bunted down to second. He's there with one out and the 2-2 pitch. On the way. Swing and there's a line drive into right. It is fair into the corner the run scores the cardinals regain the lead there goes willie for third with one out he is safe mcgee hit the chalk out in the right field corner to regain the lead for the cardinals four to three on a walk and a triple ken Obergfell brought home what proved to be the game winner on a play that became a cardinal trademark in 1982. And the infield is in squeeze play and Obergfell bunts it the squeeze play works and the Cardinals have another run. Obergfell's out at first. For the second time tonight, the Cardinals worked the squeeze play. The squeeze play was used time and again by the running Redbirds, but never as effectively as in Montreal, where it gave St. Louis its fifth run in a 5-4 victory. The next 20 days were trying ones for the Cardinals. They won only six of 17. And after a June 28th loss to the Phillies and Steve Carlton, they found themselves in second place by two-tenths of a percentage point. The next night, the Birds set things straight by snapping the Phil's eight-game win streak with a 15-3 pounding. The teams traded runs in the first before the Cards took the lead for good in the second. With runners at second and third, Lonnie Smith was hoping to sting his former teammates. The Cards need a two-out hit from Lonnie Smith. There it is, a line drive into center field, one run home. Here comes Ozzy. the throw is terrible. And Lonnie Smith stops it first, and the Cardinals lead 3-1. to one. The Cardinals added three more runs in the fifth with some help from Hendricks' two-run double. One inning later, the Redbirds extend their lead when Hernandez took the ball downtown. He's one for three of the night at a double in the first inning. Bats here with runners at first and third and hits the first one. A high fly ball to left field. It is going deep. It is gone for a three-run homer over the left field wall right at the 371 mark by Hernandez. His third of the year, and the Cardinals have a 10-1 to one lead. The bases were loaded in the eighth when Hendrick closed out the scoring with a tremendous blast. Pitch to Hendrick with the base and loaded. A long one is a grand slam for George Hendrick. Way back up into the seat. That makes it 15 to 1. Hendrick reached out and poked it way up into the seat. He has now driven in four, six, seven runs tonight. George's third career grand slam pushed the Cardinals back into first place, but it didn't last long. The name at the top of the standings changed three more times as the Cards and Phillies jockeyed for possession of the lead. And when the All-Star break began on July 12th, it was the Phils on top of the division and the Cardinals in second place. Cardinal fans were able to watch two of their favorite players in action at the All-Star game, with both Ozzy and Lonnie Smith being elected to represent the National League. In the eighth inning, the All-Star fans were treated to an outstanding defensive display by Ozzie Smith. With two on and two out, the American League was threatening to erase the National League's four to one lead. But Ozzie saved the day. He took a hit away from Lance Parrish and showed the baseball world what Cardinal fans already knew. In the field, little Ozzie is the greatest. The Cardinals spent 26 of their next 28 games in second place, proving that even in a championship season, there are disappointments and barriers on the road to victory. The night of August 2nd was perhaps the epitome of such frustrations. Playing Pittsburgh at Bush Stadium, the Cards came from behind to send the game into overtime, a 2-2 tie. Eight innings later, the game was over. 24 Cardinal runners were stranded in the 17-inning game. Four hours and 55 minutes after the contest began, Jim Cott, who had valiantly held off the Pirates for six innings of relief, gave up two runs on a single, a walk, and a triple, and the Cardinals lost four to two. But the mark of a good team is the ability to bounce back, and the Cards were a resilient bunch. 
They turned around and handed the Bucs a loss the next night and were on the winning side in six of nine games following that early morning loss to Pittsburgh. The ninth game of that stretch was against, who else? The Pirates. All three of the Redbird runs came in the fifth inning that night. There were runners at second and third when Lonnie Smith stepped up to the plate. Two on, one out. Second and third. Baumgarten works from the stretch. He's there now, kicks and pitches, change up line drive, base hit into left center, and that'll score both runners. Smith comes in to score. Here comes Andahar, cards lead, 2-0. 14 consecutive days in second place was enough. The 3-2 win jumped the Cardinals back into first and started a five-game victory streak in their next six attempts. It looked like the team would add another win the next night, August 20th, when the Giants were in town. After six, the Cards had a 7-0 advantage over the Giants, and all was well. But someone forgot to tell the Giants they couldn't play hardball with the Redbirds. A seven-run, seventh-inning blitzkrieg by the Giants left the Cards reeling, and a certain victory turned into an 8-7 loss. Once again, the team's fiber was tested, and once again, they bounced back. Leading the Giants 6-5 in the sixth inning the next evening, Lonnie Smith scored what proved to be the winning run in a subsequent 7-6 St. Louis win. Long one into left field off the bat of Smith. Over diving is the left field. He can't get it. It goes off the wall. Lonnie digs for second. He's around second. He's around third. They're going to try to score him. Here's the throw. He is safe. It's an inside the park home run. Many fans and broadcasters, too, if the truth be known, left the ballpark on Saturday night thinking that inside the park home run was as exciting a scoring play as the Cardinals had produced all year. No one knew what was in store for them the very next afternoon. The Cardinals and the Giants each collected four runs in regulation on Sunday and were still dead even when David Green came to the plate in the bottom of the 12th. Having left 10 men on base in the previous six innings, Cardinal fans were beginning to have flashbacks to the August 2nd loss to Pittsburgh. They crossed their fingers. The bases were loaded with catcher Glenn Brummer, the leading runner at third. But there were two outs and two strikes on the batter. Brummer's the big runner. He's at third. Two down. Sacks jam. Lavelle at the belt. Checks. Brummer stealing home. He is safe and the Cardinals win. Brummer stole home. The dugout comes out and they congratulate him. You wouldn't believe it. Glenn Brummer. Home, and now the Giants are out arguing about the call. The umpire never called the two-strike pitch. Glenn Brummer engraved his name in the minds of Cardinal fans and trivia buffs that day and also typified the heads-up aggressive brand of baseball played by Whitey's Redbirds. Four days later, the Cardinals moved their show to the West Coast. With a slim two-game lead over Philadelphia, every game was oh so important. Having split two games with the Padres, it fell to Doug Bear to hold off San Diego in the rubber game on August 29th. Bear pitched brilliantly in relief, striking out seven in three and a third innings of scoreless baseball. Suter came in to preserve the 5-3 St. Louis victory, and the Cardinals headed north to Los Angeles. Fernando Valenzuela was pitching for Los Angeles in the series opener, knowing that the Cardinals had beaten him only once in five attempts. Pitted against him was Cardinal rookie John Stuper who had made his major league debut just three months earlier. Will wonders never cease? The unflappable stupor got himself in and out of jam after jam for seven and two-third innings, and then stepped aside to let Suter nail down his 30th save as the Cardinals ease by Fernando three to two. The next night, the Cardinals surprised the Dodgers with four first inning runs. It watched as Los Angeles retaliated with four of their own in the seventh, plus one more in the eighth. With one out in the ninth, Tito Landrum drilled an RBI single to tie it at five. Four innings later, Kelly Paris, seeing action in his first major league game, singled to start the ball rolling what proved to be a lucky 13th. After advancing to second on a sacrifice, Paris waited as Ozzie Smith looked for the two-out hit. 3-2 pitch with the runners going. Ozzie swings and hits it hard to second. And it's booted. Here's the runner trying to score. He does as Sachs holds the ball. Sachs kicked the backhand stop. Kelly Paris kept running and slid home. Sachs had a play at the plate but never did throw.